Hello, Mrs H here. Plants are so important and as Sir David Attenborough says, we depend on plants for every breath of air we take and every mouthful of food we eat. In this video, we are going to learn about photosynthesis, a process that only plants can do and it is photosynthesis that provides us with our oxygen and our food. To carry out photosynthesis, plants require carbon dioxide and water and some light energy to make glucose and oxygen. This is the word equation. The chemical equation is CO2 plus H2O gives C6H12O6 plus O2. You need to make sure the equation is balanced, so a 6 is needed in front of each molecule except for the glucose. Notice the glucose is C6H12O6, so you can see it has carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in it, and that might make it easier to see why glucose is referred to as a carbohydrate. Light energy is needed as a catalyst for the reaction. This chemical reaction is essential for life as we know it. Being able to take a gas, water and light and make food is incredible. Photosynthesis mainly happens in the leaves. A leaf is a plant organ and it is adapted well to carry out photosynthesis as efficiently as possible. It has a large surface area which helps to maximise the amount of light that falls on its surface. It is thin. This allows carbon dioxide to diffuse into the leaf easily. In other words, a short diffusion distance for carbon dioxide. And it has a lot of vascular tissue, some people call that veins, which carry water and minerals towards the photosynthesizing cells. If we look at the leaf organ in more detail, we can see that it consists of different layers of cells. The very top and bottom layer are the outer layers called epidermal layers. There is an upper and lower epidermis and they give the leaf mechanical strength and protection. Some leaves have a waxy cuticle on the top and sometimes they have one on the bottom as well. And this will be transparent so it allows light to pass through but it helps to prevent the water evaporating off of the surface of the leaf. These long vertical cells are called palisade cells. The layer of these cells is called palisade mesophyll, and this is the name given to that tissue. Their vertical arrangement enables more cells to be tightly packed and close to the top of the leaf. These cells have lots of chloroplasts in them, which is good because they are going to access the most light. This is a spongy mesophyll cell and it's part of the spongy mesophyll tissue layer. Notice the air spaces within this tissue layer. The air spaces are important so that carbon dioxide can diffuse to as many cells as possible. Carbon dioxide enters the leaf through tiny pores on the underside called stomata. Either side of the stomata are guard cells and we can see the vascular tissue that brings water to the photosynthesizing cells. Once cells have carbon dioxide, water and are exposed to light, where does the photosynthesis actually take place? And the answer is in the chlorophyll that is found in the chloroplast. The chloroplast contain a green pigment called chlorophyll and chlorophyll absorbs the light needed for photosynthesis to take place. Let's look at the photosynthesis equation again. Excess oxygen will be released as a gas into the air. But what happens to the glucose? Well, a few things can happen. The glucose can be used in plant respiration along with the oxygen the plant has also just made and respiration releases energy and this energy can be used for growth so building bigger molecules from smaller ones. The energy can also be used for the movement of ions or molecules around the plant and the energy can be used to convert glucose into other substances such as converting glucose into starch, which can be stored in the cytoplasm. It could be converted to other sugars and transported to other parts of the plant via the phloem. And the glucose could be used to make cellulose, which is needed for cell walls 
and protein can be made from glucose and nitrates and the nitrates would be absorbed through the uh, roots of the plant. So if starch is present, photosynthesis has taken place. Iodine solution is used to test for starch and changes from brown to black if starch is present and stays brown if starch is not present. These are variegated leaves. The areas that are not green have no chlorophyll and if there's no chlorophyll, there'll be no photosynthesis and therefore no starch present. The leaf on the left is before the starch test. Testing a leaf for starch requires you to boil the leaf in ethanol to remove the chlorophyll, rinse it and then gently break the cell walls down. You can look the method up. But on the right is the leaf after it has been through the process and you can see that there is no starch present where there is no chlorophyll and there is starch present where the chlorophyll was. Have a quick look at this exam question. The diagram shows a variegated leaf, white area and the green area. Which diagram shows the correct starch results for the variegated leaf? Look at the key. We know it definitely can't be A or D, so is it B or C? Well, green is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll means photosynthesis has taken place. If photosynthesis has taken place, then glucose is made and that's converted to starch, so it must be B. There are quite a few factors that can speed up the rate of photosynthesis, but the main three the exam boards tend to focus on are light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration and temperature. How much chlorophyll there is will affect the rate as will water availability, but they tend to just focus on these main three. Whichever factor is in the shortest supply will determine the overall rate of photosynthesis. This factor is the limiting factor. When we look at this graph, we can see that as we increase light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis also increases until a certain point at which the rate is going as fast as it can. No matter how much you increase the light intensity, the rate does not get any faster after this point. The rate is being limited by a different factor. It could be that there's not enough carbon dioxide available or that the temperature needs to be increased. If we increased the carbon dioxide concentration, the rate would go faster. If we increased the temperature, the rate would go faster, but with temperature, we need to make sure we don't increase it too much, otherwise we will denature the enzymes needed for photosynthesis to take place, and then the reaction would stop altogether. What is limiting the rate at this part of the graph? Well, as this rate is increasing due to light intensity, then at this point of the graph, the light intensity is the limiting factor. If you get this question in an exam, they may put a different factor on the x-axis, so make sure you check for that. Let's have a go at an exam question on this. Notice the x-axis this time is carbon dioxide concentration. So what is limiting the rate of photosynthesis at part x? Carbon dioxide concentration, how can we tell? Well, as you increase carbon dioxide concentration, the rate of photosynthesis also increases. At parts Y and Z, it doesn't matter how much more you increase the carbon dioxide concentration, the rate cannot go any faster because another factor is now in short supply and therefore limiting the rate. The limiting factor at part Y and Z could be light intensity or temperature. Farmers can manipulate the growing conditions to maximise the yield of their crop. Let's look at an example question here. Light intensity, temperature and concentration of carbon dioxide are factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. Scientists investigated the effects of these three factors on the rate of photosynthesis 
in tomato plants growing in a greenhouse. The graph shows the results. Now remember, the faster the rate of photosynthesis, the more glucose is made and the plants will grow bigger. In this case, you'll get bigger tomatoes. At a concentration of carbon dioxide at 0.03%, there is not much difference in the rate of photosynthesis at 20 degrees C or 25 degrees C. However, there is a very large difference in the rate of photosynthesis once the carbon dioxide concentration is increased from 0.03% to 0.1%. And the increase in temperature at 0.1% carbon dioxide concentration makes a much bigger impact than at lower concentrations. So looking at these results, the farmer might like to maintain his greenhouse at 25 degrees C and 0.1% carbon dioxide concentration to get the maximum rate of photosynthesis, therefore the greatest tomato plant yield. Or they may be happy with the yield at 20 degrees C because it's still a good rate of photosynthesis at 0.1% carbon dioxide concentration. And if they do it at 20 degrees C, then they actually save some money on heating costs, but still get a good yield. So there are different ways you can answer this question. One last question. When you see a question like this, you may not realise this is to do with photosynthesis. This kind of question comes up a lot in exams and is worded differently or maybe put in a different context. But the answers are always the same. So let's work it through. Plants infected with aphids may show symptoms of magnesium deficiency. Magnesium deficiency symptoms include yellow leaves and stunted growth. Explain how a deficiency of magnesium could cause these symptoms. You may have heard about magnesium deficiency in the topic on plant diseases, but this question is all about photosynthesis. The yellow leaves means there's no chlorophyll and where there's no chlorophyll, no light energy can be absorbed. That means no photosynthesis can happen, no glucose will be made, so there'll be no energy for growth, hence why there's stunted growth. Annotating the exam question in this way is a good skill to practice because now you have all the important points you need to be able to write out a proper answer on the lines you will be provided with. And just to add, I've also seen similar questions but linked to why plants affected by tobacco mosaic virus have stunted growth. Because the tobacco mosaic virus causes leaves to be discolored, the answer is going to be the same. Where you have no chlorophyll, There'll be no light absorbed, no photosynthesis, etc, etc. So it will be the same answer. And that is it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. Please like and subscribe for more content. Don't forget to visit our website biologybreakdown.co.uk for more resources and work packs.